OMG guys, we are here at the Tarshur Sanctuary. Mabuhai Squad, I have been waiting for this. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Mabuhai Squad, this is going to be an animal adventure. Hey guys, welcome to my daily vlogs. Please subscribe. RJ, are you excited to meet the Tarshers? Yeah. All right, so Mabuhai Squad, for those of you who are just joining us, welcome to the channel. My name is Mikey Bustos, this is RJ Garcia. We've been invited here to Bohol to vlog around because tourism is starting to open up slowly here in the Philippines. And there is a responsible way to vacation. Um, but aside from that, we wanted to show all of you guys all the amazing things here in Bohol. Now that tourism is opening up and the locals and Bohol tourism have been so warm at accommodating us um, and we are also here courtesy of Cebu Pacific and Bohol Tourism. So for those of you who don't know what a Tarsher is, a Tarsher is a type of... He's a Tarsher. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, a Tarsher is... It's a type of primate. It's not a monkey um, but like it's related to a monkey and Bohol is very famous for the iconic Tarshers that live here. This man here, he's called the Tarsher Man. OMG. You know what this reminds me of? Remember when we were in Bor Borneo yeah. and we saw the monkeys? It says here, Tarshers are resting. Please observe silence. See that? Oh, there's even a French. Interesting. So Tarshers are nocturnal creatures. They're awake at night. They sleep during the day. And they are insectivorous, meaning they eat insects. Now this here is a Tarsher sanctuary. Um, Tarshers are protected here in the Philippines because they've been victims of the illegal trade. Like people catch them from the wild and then through a black market sell them. But they don't do well in cages. Like like, from what I understand, they get so stressed in a cage, they like bash their heads against the cage bars and kill themselves. Like that's how stressed they are and how not built for captivity these creatures are. So um, this here is a sanctuary, they are protected. Tarshers are actually native to um, other parts of the Philippines and um, other parts of Southeast Asia. We got a scan for temperature. All right. All right. See, it says no flash, please, because it hurts their eyes. Oh, okay. And Cebu Pacific. Awesome. So guys, I was looking at some trivia on Tarshers and yes, they're endangered, which means there's a 20% chance of completely vanishing from the world in the next 20 years. Oh, they really need to be protected. Guys, this is Jera. She's gonna take us to the Tarshers now. She's our local guide. Oh, this is so special, Mabuhai Squad. This is, I've been waiting for this. So we have to look for them. They're like just all around. You are in Tarshar territory. Okay, OMG. She's literally, oh my God, it's there. Oh my gosh, guys, oh my gosh. Okay, let's go. Oh my, where? I, oh my God, oh my gosh, it's looking at me. Oh my gosh, okay, I see it, hold on, look. Mabu High Squad, it is so tiny, ready? Tell me when you see it. Do you see those eyes? Do you see those eyes? Oh my gosh, it's there, guys. Okay, maybe we'll get a better look. He looks like Cypher. Do you guys see it? Do you guys see it? Isn't he cute? Hey. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. So cute. Oh my gosh, it is so adorable. It's like a little toy. Archie's like, it looks like Cypher. Oh my gosh, they're so adorable. It's like tiny, my oh boy squad, it's like this big. Hi buddy, sorry. We're not gonna come close. Oh my gosh. So they like sleep during the day in like, in like the shade. They're nocturnal, they wake up at night and then they eat bugs. OMG guys, we're going to see more. Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Look at guys, we're looking at Tarshar habitat. Isn't this amazing? See that? Oh, okay, interesting. So they don't live in communities like say monkeys and gorillas and like other apes. They're solitary creatures, but they do come together to breed. Guys, and like we saw like in the entrance, there's a skeleton of a baby. They're literally like the babies are this tiny. They're so cute. So guys, these animals are endangered because of habitat destruction, hunters for um, the illegal pet trade, and also house cats. Can you believe it? So this entire compound is like protected by walls, so no cats can come here and kill them. Oh my gosh. It's interesting how she knows where they are. Wow. Oh, I see. Away from the first sightings. There's no other Tarshish in that area. I see. Yes. That was his territory yeah. or her territory. Right. Okay, so Tarshers like claim a plot of like land as theirs. It's nice and cool here. Yeah, bamboo, beautiful. I love bamboo. OMG, all of you Ants Canada followers. Oh my gosh. What was that? 
it's a bird. OMG. There's like weird random animal noises. Anyways, as, you, as I was saying, all you Ants Canada followers who are following these vlogs, I wish I could spend the whole day here to film like the bugs and stuff here. OMG guys, there's another. Oh my gosh, wow. It's right there. Oh my gosh, it's right there. This is a better view. See him? Hey. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Oh, adorable. Why am I talking in a baby voice? It's <laughs> Look at its fingers. Isn't it amazing that we're like remotely related to this creature, we humans? These are types of primates, guys. A lot of people think they're marsupials, but they're not. They are actually eutherian, so they don't have a pouch. They literally give birth. They are gorgeous creatures. They look so goblin-like. Look at it, look at it looking around. Oh my gosh, oh, it's going back to sleep. <laughs> and do you guys hear that animal in the background? That's a type of gecko. He's exercising his eyes? Oh my gosh, they exercise their eyes? I guess so, because they're so big. Look at him looking around. He's such an intelligent creature. Is this a boy or a girl? It's, oh, it's a boy. Oh my gosh, he's so handsome. Look at his little fingers, they're so cute. So guys, turns out this male Tarsier's vision is not good during the day. At the night, accurate. Day cannot. So they rely on their other senses to like know the world around them. So their ears are constantly moving, they're listening, they're feeling for vibration. And I think like as we're here, the Tarsha knows we're around. It can maybe see certain like shapes of us around, but it can't exactly see us. So like we're trying not to like freak it out right now. Oh my gosh, it's moving. Where's it going? Oh, it's gonna transfer location. Whoa, it's so cute. It looks like a mouse with a tail. And that tail is prehensile or what? Can it use its tail to hang? No, no. okay. Not prehensile, just for balancing. Okay, we'll leave it alone now. Bye, fella. We're going. See you. It's like looking at us. It's like, all right, leave now. I have a few more hours of sleep before I gotta wake up and hunt. Mabuhay squad, Jera would like to say hi to you. And she would like to invite you guys to visit this sanctuary of the Tarshers. What's the name of this sanctuary? Philippine Tarsier Sanctuary, Torilla. All right, guys. So be sure to come here and look for Jera. And because we're Filipino, we're taking pictures. Thank you. So if you're just joining us uh, on these vlogs featuring Bohol Island here in the Philippines, RJ and I were swab tested, obviously we came out negative, and before we came here, um, which is one of the requirements to come here. So you have to basically get a permit to travel to Bohol in order to get this permit, which is almost kind of like a travel visa in a way. Um, you need to show proof of a negative COVID test uh, 72 hours before the flight. It was all for safety and security of everyone. So everyone who traveled to this island um, as a tourist is in a bubble, like a COVID-free bubble. So the government really monitors where these tourists go. Um, so you can't just, for example, go on random tours. You have to book them through an app called My Bohol app. And that way everyone is in this bubble. Um, and not all tours on the island uh, have the license to continue running in this new normal. Like they have to go on rigorous safety checks and measures and protocols in order to get the permit to run. So this sanctuary is one of those tours that have been accredited. As you've seen in previous vlogs, there's also the ATVing, the Labok River tour that you just saw in yesterday's vlog. So uh, they're very, very careful. Now that tourism is opening up again, the Philippine government, of, in the tourism department, DOT, is really pushing um, the idea of responsible travel, you know, because you want to protect tourists and they want to protect locals. So guys, this is the office of the Philippine Tarsher Foundation Inc. Um, and you guys can actually donate to this sanctuary. See, simply go to tarsherfoundation.org, click share dollar and you can donate or you can go directly to tarsherfoundation.org slash how dash to dash help dash two. It's powered by Gumroad. Ooh, interesting. And then you guys can help out these Tarshers, you see? See that? And here's their contact info if you guys had any questions to help out these little cute creatures which are endangered. See Mabuhay Squad, the Philippines is a biodiverse bank of species, honestly. Um, so rich in biodiversity. Um, and many of these animals are, you know, endemic found only in Philippines. Um, this variety of Tarsier is only found in the Philippines, although there are different kinds of Tarsiers all over Southeast Asia. The Philippine Tarsier is cute, isn't it? You guys saw. I, I just love that 
a place like this exists to protect them. You know, it's also my dream to somehow be involved in conservation of some endemic animals here in the Philippines. You know, we have the Mabuhay Squad farmhouse um, and we've got some land there, even an aviary. So who knows, maybe in the future, we'll be able to work closely with um, the government at saving endemic creatures. Uh, we also have the Iloilo property, uh, agricultural farm. Maybe that part of it can be dedicated to, for example, helping reestablish uh, native deer. Uh, you know, I understand there's a native species of deer here in the Philippines that's endangered as well. So um, these are things that have been going through my mind for future projects. Wouldn't that be great? See guys, there are three species of Tarshers. Okay, it's not even variety, like three distinct species. There's the Western Tarsher that looks like that, the Philippine Tarsher, which you guys saw earlier, and the Eastern Tarsher. And this is where they're located. So Western is here, Eastern is here, and well, oh, Philippine Tarshers are here. Is this Malaysia? Oh my gosh, my geography is bad. Indonesia, Malaysia here. Yeah. And then this here is Indonesia. Okay, interesting. Wow, what creatures, honestly. Mabuhay squad, check this out. So remember how you saw the picture of the Tarsher man, right? The Tarsher man is what he's called. This guy right here. He used to be a hunter of Tarshers. And then he just, what, he what happened? He's now the protector. He protects them now. Uh -huh, uh, and of course, he made it sure that the Tarshers are well protected because he managed the, this entire oh. uh, property or facility. Amazing. And then, since he became uh, so famous, Tarsier man, that's why he, the, the government named, uh, named a genus or a species, the Philippine Tarsiers, after him. So oh it's called God. Carlito Sairichta because his name is Carlito Pizarras. Oh my gosh, and guys. Can you imagine having an entire genus of animal named after you uh -huh. because you tagged as, I guess, the ambassador uh -huh. of, of that animal? Carlitos is the name of the genus of the Philippine Tarsier. OMG, that's awesome. Even Prince Charles has held a Tarsier. <laughs> they don't allow this anymore, uh, but back in the day, yeah. Yeah, that was like 15, 20 years ago. Oh my. OMG, guys, what you're looking at here are their favorite foods. This is their menu. Yeah. <laughs> they eat moths and butterflies, so lepidopterins, you see. Oh, they eat a vast array of lepidopterins. And then they also eat orthopterins, you see, grasshoppers and stuff. They eat hymenopterins. We have, like, I see a few bees here. Yeah. Odonata, dragonflies. They eat several beetle species, cicadas as well. Beetles are coleoptera. Cicada belongs to Hemiptera. These are phasmids. They eat stick bugs, mantodia, mantises. Wow, they eat everything. They eat crickets. It's like they're fast food, guys. So you mean we, we actually give them crickets? Oh, okay, they catch wild crickets. That's their During favorite. Night time, yeah. Okay. So one adult tarsier could uh, consume, they said, five to ten. Crickets yeah, a crickets. night. Guys, insects are the food of the world. These tarsiers are ahead of... They, they're a good example for us. We should be eating insects and crickets too. See guys, this guy, the Tarsier man, it originally was just one genus, and then they taxonomically divided it into three genuses. Tarsius, Cephalopachys, and Carlito. OMG Carlito, you're so lucky. I hope they name an ant genus after me. <laughs> Guys, by the way, forgot to mention, when you come here, tip them. Um, everywhere you go, tip the locals. You know, when the pandemic hit, all their jobs were like lost, pretty much. They had to, they were forced to adapt and like take on different industries like selling online, online businesses. Um, and so I'm sure a little bit of your help would go a long way for them. RJ and I have enjoyed their warm accommodations. So guys, Carlito is actually around here somewhere. Sadly, we can't find him. But when you come here, look for Carlito. He's like a Tarsier celebrity seriously maybe he's in the bushes already sir yeah he's working that's fine we'll see him soon we'll be back mabuhay squad that was so much fun now we are here at the final stop of our countryside tour here in Bohol and you guys got to see this beautiful beautiful sight check it out <laughs> 